what will be the best drivetrain in the future or the drivetrain that's used the most in the future. At the moment we're sort of got a couple of types hanging around. We've we've actually still got 11 speed. We've got 12 speed both in SRAM and Shimano. Now we've got um, Axis, which is wireless drivetrain, and we've even got a 13 speed hydraulic drivetrain by Rotor that's been released a little while ago that's coming th through to mountain bikes in the near future. Um, now, first off, I wonder what's going to happen to 11 speed now that 12 speed's pretty much being specced on all new bikes. Now I think probably 11 speed will eventually die out. However, having said that, I do understand that 12 speed has tighter tolerances required. It's a bit harder to set up because you've got the bigger range and more gears. The 11 speed is more bulletproof, so it's easier for someone to fix, maintain, look after without dropping tra chains or anything like that, whereas 12 speed starts to get a bit fiddly. So for that reason, maybe 11 speed won't disappear completely, but it's looking more likely just because it's specced on newer bikes that 12 speed will probably take over on the mechanical side. As far as 13 speed goes, um, I think it'll be probably safe to say it's a little bit of a sideshow. The reason Rotor went with the 13 speed apparently is that there was a lot of patents on the 12 speed stuff that Shimano or SRAM have. Um, I was actually surprised they can fit a 13 speed um, cassette on a standard bike without more concavity in the wheel um, at the hub but apparently they can in fact they actually use a normal chain 11 speed chain not even a 12 speed chain or a thinner chain so um, I don't think there's any real reason to have 11 speed like you could actually I mean, 13 speed, you could actually, in my mind, you could still have 11 speed with a greater range or just stick with the 12 speed that's been developed rather than go from 13 speed. But I suppose the important thing about the rotor system is that it's hydraulic rather than cable actuated. And I think they're actually saying that the hydraulic system will have even less maintenance required than a cable system which I can sort of see um, I mean I do spend time bleeding hydraulic brakes however so although the forces maybe are a little bit bigger on a hydraulic brakes but don't know about that argument I mean bleeding things is a bit annoying as opposed to just threading through a cable so at the end of the day, I think probably that won't really take off or be a niche thing. I don't know if they can get it any lighter than a cable actuated system either with hydraulic fluids. Which leads on to the last type, which is the newest um, wireless system. Now, as opposed to the hydraulic, I think the wireless system definitely does have a future and could actually rival, potentially, cable systems in the future and could actually take over as being more popular. Obviously, at the moment, it's extremely expensive compared to other systems. Um... But I think the disadvantages, for example, like running out of battery um, and uh, 
wireless problems and all that. I think they've figured that out. The weight is very similar. In fact, I think it's tiny little bit less weight than a current 12 speed system. And the main thing is it's just a lot of less cables hanging around going through your frame and everything like that. So I can see, I think there will always be a place for cable, but there's a fair potential that wireless will become, once it becomes cheaper, and I don't see any reason why it shouldn't become cheaper because there's nothing inherently expensive about a tiny little motor in the back that moves the uh, gears. Why that system couldn't take over cable actuated in a big way. Uh, I don't know what the split will eventually be. Like it might, but I can see it being like 80% wireless, 20% cable eventually over time. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.